Let's add a way to change the color of what we put on the screen. So we'll create a new file, text mode color codes.cpp, and we need to define names for each of the colors that we can use in background and in foreground. So we'll start out with define foreground black 0x00. Now we'll copy that and make blue, then we'll make green, so on and so forth. Right, now that we've got the foreground colors defined, we need to define the background colors. So we'll start out with define background black 0x00, background blue 0x10, so on and so forth. Except now that we're doing the background, when we get to 0x08, instead of going from dark grey, light blue, light green, light cyan, etc., it'll be these first eight colors, except the foreground color will be flashing. So we'll fill these in and we'll see how it goes. So now that we're up to 0x8, instead of writing dark grey, we'll write blinking black. And what this will do is any text printed onto this background will be flashing. So 0x. Eight zero, and we'll do the same with the rest of the colors. All right, so now that we've got all of these values, we can use them in our actual function. Now that was probably a bit tedious to type in, but it's going to save us a lot of work down the line when we just want to change the colors nice and easy. Now we need to do pragma once so that we can include it multiple times without the compiler having a fit, and then we can include it in our textprint.cpp. Right, now in our print string function, we need to add a argument, uint8 color. Now, we can make this an optional argument, so we can make the color equal background black or foreground white. So what we'll do is we all these two colors together and that'll produce the uint8 that we want. So it'll have a black background and a white foreground. And then here we have VGA memory yada yada and we set it to our char pointer what we need to do is plus index times 2 plus 1 equals our color All right and since we declared that as a optional argument we don't need to specify it but we can so we'll do background blinking red so the background will be red and our text on top of it is blinking so background blinking red and foreground Cyan. Now let's see what that looks like. As you can see, the background is red, our foreground is cyan, and it's blinking. And our optional variable defaults to black background and white foreground, so that's why this is like that. Alright, so now that we have a way of printing to the screen, we need to create a way to clear the screen. So we'll create a void clear screen, and we'll set the clear color uint8 clear color and we'll make it an optional variable so the default is background black and foreground white right now we could iterate through all of the characters in the video memory and set them to zero but there's a quicker way that we can do it you see we're operating on a 64 bit so that means we can set 64 bits at once instead of setting 8 bits at once which is a lot faster so we'll make a 64 bit value We'll just call it value and we'll set it to zero. Now we need to add to value clear color shifted by eight. Then we need to add shifted by 24, then 40, and then 56. Uh, this needs to be value plus equals. Right, and now since we're doing the bitwise operations on clear color, as soon as we get above the size of this which is 8 it's going to cut it off so this needs to be a 64 bit as well now let's get on to the actual loop for uint 64 pointer i equals uint 64 pointer vga memory i less than uint 64 vga memory plus 4000 which is the size of our video memory i plus plus now every i++ is going to increment our i by 8 because it's a 64-bit pointer. It's really strange, but that's what it does. And then we just need to dereference i equals value. Alright, now let's test that out. So we've done all of this stuff. So we'll type clear screen. And we'll just leave it as default. We'll set the screen to black. Now as you see, 
we have a completely black screen and we can set this to any color we want so we can do background blue with a foreground white Ta-da! now we have the blue and it can be red and you get the picture now just to prove to you that this is better than doing it one char at a time we can make a uint 8 test set test to 0 and then every time we do it increment test by 1 then after we clear the screen we can print string hex to string test and we'll see what we get as you can see we have f4 and the hexadecimal value of f4 is 244 so we've only run our loop 244 times which is so much better than running it 4000 times so as you can see that is far more optimized than doing it one character at a time